I, I, I had to write this two-page sort of a document for these guys. I said, look, it's very simple. Baseball is a game where you follow the ball. Where do you think people's eyes go when the guy hits the ball? Well, that's what you've got to do. You've got to follow the ball to where it goes, and then as they work the ball back into the infield, you follow the ball back in. That way, the people have a feel for what's going on. We didn't even have a cameraman there for the only no-hitter that I ever saw uh, in person in Cleveland. Big right-hander for the Indians, Len Barker. His no-hitter against Toronto. I kept calling the station. I said, this guy is working on a no-hitter. We gotta get a camera here. Well, they finally got one here at the eighth inning. I was so lucky that we at least got the last two innings. But when you go to different markets, you almost have to indoctrinate some of these guys. Now, if Bobby had been there, no problem. He would have followed the ball anywhere it was. He followed anything and everything. He might even have shot, uh, you know, some fan. Uh, and he, he would follow foul balls. Had one guy who leaned over the railing too much and almost toppled out. He grabbed the railing and came back in. But he followed it, and we, we were able to use that shot. Bobby was such an accomplished guy, probably the best photojournalist that I ever worked with. And I worked with some very good ones. And Channel 6 really had some tremendous people in that newsroom. And I, I really miss all those people when I left Channel 6. But um, a lot of times I would pick up Bobby down at um, where they lived on Kennedy Boulevard to come here to the luncheons because he didn't have a car there. Then he got the brilliant idea of leasing the car. Is that right? <laughs> or he would get Uber or somebody. You know, he had some kind of a ride where he didn't have to call me all the time. But I, a lot of times I called him, I said, hey, do you need a ride up to lunch? And he says, oh, that would be nice. And he wouldn't even ask sometimes. He would just do it on his own. So, so Bobby and I were just, um, like I said, brothers. He was a, a detailed guy. And not only that, he was a life of the party. Bobby never shied away from people. He loved people. He loved walking around with that camera at all of our functions, especially on the night when we had Hall of Fame people. And um, if Bobby walked around without a camera, he was almost half undressed. Um, that's about what I saw in, in what I, I've considered a, a, an optimist. So, Optimum professional. And um, he must have a treasure trove of photographies, uh, photograph uh, photographic pictures of all these different situations at home. How many scrapbooks have you got at home like that? <laughs> well, all I can say is uh, Bob Kravitz left his mark. Um, we were both singers. I grew up as a choir boy in Washington. And uh, have sung, I guess, semi-professionally down the shore, a couple of the casinos and things of that nature. Uh, I've done a couple of Eagles games, um, two Phillies games two years ago, and um, one 76 a game. Uh, no Flyers, that was uh, Kate Smith's job. And uh, all I can say is, is that when I heard that Bobby had died, not only was I shocked, but I, uh, it just hit me right between the eyes. I mean, I, I slumped in the chair when I, when I heard it. Uh, and I knew he wasn't well, I mean, but what he's gone through, and all the guys have said the same thing. He was a great actor, because I know there were many, many times when I was with him, he was really hurting, and he never, he never said a peep about anything pertaining to him physically and so forth. I mean, I knew a lot of what he went through, because he told me, but uh, he didn't. It wasn't as if he was complaining, he was just stating some facts. So when you lose somebody like that who you work for, worked with and miss the times that we were worth working together all those years, because not only did I work with him in Channel 6, but when I came back to Philadelphia, I worked with him in Channel 10. And as far as his love for helicopters, I have to say this. I was drafted in the United States Army. Yes, I was on our side. <laughs> anyway, 
Um, we ended up, I was at Fort Bragg, North Carolina, after basic training in Fort Jackson, South Carolina. And we talked our way into producing radio and television shows for the public relations arm of the base. And we would do stories around the base. Well, if you know anything about Fort Bragg, that's the home of the 82nd Airborne Division, uh, which became famous in World War II with the guys that got into Normandy. And uh, the 101st Airborne Division is at Fort Campbell, Kentucky. So those are our two paratrooper units. And we'd go out to the drop zone, and once in a while, we had what they called a screamer, where the guy shoot didn't open. And um, of course, we didn't film any of that or even talked about it, but, uh, but it, it, it happens. But Bobby's love of helicopters, I'm the complete opposite. I told my daughters never to get in a helicopter for some joyride at Disney World or over the Grand Canyon. The Grand Canyon, I mean, they've they had so many crashes down there, they usually use, lose one a year. Two years ago, an entire New York family got wiped out because the great thing went in. They have up and down drafts at the canyon. So anyway, um, I was very lucky when I worked in Cleveland. We went down to do a Bengals game from Cleveland, and we flew down in a four-seat helicopter. Small, small, and... Uh, I didn't, grand in. I didn't like to ride down, and I certainly didn't like to ride back because we were coming back in the dark. But we got back okay. But the very next day, the crew went to that same helicopter that morning to fly someplace to do a story. And as the plane, the copter got off about six to eight feet, and with what Bobby went through down by the river, happened right there on the landing pod right there next to Lake Erie. Crashed back down and it tipped over. Luckily, it didn't catch fire. And uh, the three people that were in it all, all survived okay. But um, you just never know about those. I was in a helicopter at the time when Martin Luther King made his great speech down on the mall in Washington, civil rights speech. But luckily, I was just doing a little bit of traffic on the way back after it had broken up, and um, then they took him back to the station. I was so relieved to get out of that car. But Bobby had a feeling, and like he said, there was nothing like photographing from above to get the job done, and for him to, to love the helicopter as much as he did. Think of all the footage that he shot down through the years for all the stations he worked for. Um, he had a lot more courage than I did. I mean, I just, I just didn't trust him. But, uh, you know, man is not born to fly, except in a, to me, a big plane. So I go out and see my daughter out in Phoenix twice a year, uh, but I make sure that I've got four engines, not one little whirly bird above me. But the courage that Bob had to, to do those stories where he could have easily just ridden in a truck and, you know, stay on terra firma and done it. He'd rather do it from up there and get all these different shots and so forth. And uh, he was to be commended for that. So, my brother, I love you. Stay well, and we'll all be up there in the great sky. I tried to teach Bobby to play some golf. I still play a lot of golf. I used to play tennis and stuff. I was. I was a baseball and basketball player on scholarship in college, and um, but have now turned to the smaller ball, which is a lot harder, and still hit uh, still hit the drive over a little over 200 yards. So I'm still lifting weights, and uh, luckily for me, knock on wood, I'm still hanging around. But I'll be up there, with Bobby, and uh, I wonder if the good Lord has a baseball team up there. We can uh, do some work with. Uh, with what they're doing out there. So that's something I look forward to, but not yet. I've got a lot more time, I hope. Now, Jerry has asked, Jerry has asked me to sing a song. Um, it's a very inspirational song, and uh, one whereby uh, I'm not the greatest voice. <clears throat> I have allergies and so forth, but I'll give it a try. 
because it's for Bobby and believe me, it's definitely from the heart. And I'm sure you all know it, but if you want to sing along, that would be fine. It's called You'll Never Walk Alone. <laughs> When you walk through a storm, hold your head up high and don't be afraid of the dark. At the end of the storm is a golden sky and the sweet silver song of a lark. Walk on through the wind, walk on through the rain, though your dreams be tossed and blown. Walk on Never walk alone. 